The fuel hose delivers fuel from the fuel tank to the carburetor. The pigtail design helps the fuel filter to move freely in the fuel tank when the saw is tipped. The fuel hose is made of a rubber material, which over time will harden and crack or break. Cracks in the fuel hose can cause the saw to run poorly and periodically die. A broken fuel hose will prevent the saw from starting. Leaking gas can also be caused by a cracked or broken fuel hose. Replacing the fuel hose is a repair that you can do yourself, and I'm going to show you how. Hi, I'm Mark Socha. Do-it-yourself repairs like these are easier than you might think. From lawn machines to cordless grills, kitchen mixers, outdoor grills, our how-to videos walk you through each repair from start to finish. So doing it yourself means never having to do it alone. Let's get started. I'll begin by removing the top cover from the chainsaw. Next, I'll remove the air filter. Now remove the throttle linkage from the carburetor. To do that, you push the lever out and then lift it up. And now the linkage will come free. Now remove the wires from the ignition switch. Now remove the air intake from the carburetor. There's a couple of rubber isolators on either side of the air intake, and I'll pull those away from the intake so I can remove it. The choke lever is still attached to the carburetor, and it's held with a couple of tabs. I'll just squeeze those together so I can remove it. At this point, the only thing holding the carburetor to the saw are a couple of fuel lines, and I'll remove those from the carburetor now. The primer line, and the incoming fuel line. This is your incoming fuel line. It's the part that we're replacing. Depending on where your fuel line failed, this may have already broken off. If not, and it's sticking out of the tank like ours is, the easiest way to remove it is to just cut it flush with the tank grommet. So I'll use a pair of nippers. Snip it off as close as I can. And then I'll use a small screwdriver to push it into the tank.
You'll also want to inspect this tank grommet. If it is hardened or cracked, you'll want to replace it as well. Now remove the fuel cap and pull the rest of the fuel line and the fuel filter out of the fuel tank. If you haven't already drained the fuel, you'll want to at this point. There's a couple ways you can pull the fuel line out. A piece of wire bent to a hook works well, or a pair of hemostats. Now I can install the new fuel line. You'll notice that the new line comes with tapers cut on the ends, and this makes it easier to install it into the tank. I'm going to install it from the top of the tank and then pull it through. So I'll line up the fuel line with the grommet, push as much of it down into the tank as I can. It can be helpful to put a little bit of two cycle oil on the line, it'll make it slide through that grommet a little easier. Now that I have the end of the fuel line sticking through the tank grommet, I'll use a pair of hemostats to grab it and pull it the rest of the way through. I'll pull the line through until I've got just about three inches or so sticking out from the tank. That'll work. Now we can install the fuel filter. If your filter is in good shape, you can just reuse the old one. If it's been a while since you've changed it, it's a good time to put a new one on. I'll snip the end of the line flush, removing the taper from the factory, and now I just press the fuel filter onto the fuel line. and I can stick it back into the tank. Now I'll cut the other end of the fuel line square so we can attach it to the carburetor. and I'll reattach the primer line. I'll place the carburetor back down into the housing and at this point you'll need to adjust the incoming fuel line for length, either pulling more out or more likely pushing some back down into the tank. You don't want the line to be kinked. Now I'll reinstall the air intake, starting with snapping the choke lever back onto the carburetor. Next, I'll place the intake back into the rubber isolators. I'm just using a screwdriver to push the isolators back to align the holes with the pins. A pair of needle nose pliers can also be helpful here. The isolators are pretty flexible, so you can bend and prime around where you need to to get the pin back in place. There we go. Now I can re-secure the intake and the carburetor to the saw with the screws. Start with the longer screws on the bottom 
because they not only hold the intake, but they also hold the carburetor. Before I tighten those screws all the way, I'll get the ones on top started. Now I can reinstall the throttle linkage. This end of the linkage needs to go through the rubber grommet and then into the slot on the handle. The opposite end aligns with the throttle plate. and then I push the lever back down to secure it. Now I'll reinstall the ignition switch wires. Now the air filter. And I'll finish up by reinstalling the top cover. And that's how easy it is to replace the fuel line on your chainsaw. Be sure to check back often for new videos and expert advice. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment.